out of it. We want to see a Kenny Unleashed. If there's one set of players and one team he can do it around, it's this G2. We're about to get into the game. We are starting off on Inferno. We've got G2 up on the CT side, Furia on the T side. And do you know what? For Furia, I don't think it matters what side you start at. But at least for G2, if Kenny can get going early on this side, they do have a great chance within it. Get that confidence rolling early, get some few rounds built up and work their magic from there. Yeah, we talked about building blocks, and I believe that Furia, they follow that same protocol, right? They don't really need to have the same round from the first second to the very end. They play it as a, I want to say, a natural, a flowing organism. They're trying to be aggressive, and whether they find the kill or not, they change the game plan. So in that sense, I don't think the rematch is going to be too, too hard for Furia. We will see if I'm wrong in the next uh, couple of hours. <laughs> yeah, just a few hours, hopefully. You never know how it will go. We don't want any more delays. We had that enough yesterday when it came to it. Right now, though, Furia poised and ready outside the B side. But look at this. G2, they've got on a fast flank. Oh, easy first kill. Hunter's not going to miss those. Now the pressure's being applied. But this is what you've got to be careful of. Furia, the wolf pack mentality. Or maybe you call it the panther mentality. As Vinny will go down. Swift headshot delivered through the smoke. They put it into an even 3v3. But Furia are sticking to their guns. They're still heading to B. And the full rotation isn't over yet from G2. And they have to be very careful if they want to wander up Banana right now. Because they know already, as soon as the Hunter came around, he got dealt with. So now Banana is a threat, as you're mentioning. We have Nico deciding to go back to CT spawn. So it's going to be a group retake. It's about to go down. Glocks versus P2000 and USPs, and the clock will prevail. Art starting the show, leaving Nico now in one versus two. He's got information as to one of the opponent, but he doesn't know about Yuri. So we see Fia deciding to play oh. together. Nico's chiming in, and he cannot connect. Good pistol round for Fia. They kick things off with a victory. And I love that there, right? Nico was going fast. He knew he didn't have time on his side. But the Furia players, they were stuck together. They were ready and waiting for it. This one was nice from Amanek. Just takes a couple of pop shots while he's running away. We'll be able to deliver the headshots. And the double poke that came in at the end, this was kind of the thing that broke G2 there. Not much of a chance to come in with it. And this is one thing I'm going to say positive again when it comes to the team of Furia. Smiles on their faces. Good mood. It is so needed. It is so important when it comes to their level and their way of Counter-Strike. The emotions, of course, the emotions. Now we have G2 deciding to force by completely and already look at the pace that Furia is bringing to the table. Art is 1 minute and 38 seconds already pushing, already fighting towards mid, and that is territory being taken for Furia. G2, they'll have to accept that, pull back just a little bit. They decide to stick with the 3 2 setup at the moment, but towards A long. It is Hunter alone now, being overrun back. The MAC 10, good job by Case Harado. That's an open man, an open map for Furia. This is exactly what they needed, not to fall short. So the upgraded weapons coming in there. So far, so good, and five alive. Okay, so I don't want to shoot through the smoke, but it's Yuri doing all the damage. Fury have swarmed the site. They've got control of it. And this means Yuji will save on to what they've got. That's the best thing they can do in a situation like this. Try and take it through to the next round, because you're not really going to try a 2v5 like this. No, you don't. And they have Kevlar's to work with. They have utilities as well, pistols, so really no reason, no logic for G2 to try and retake that. You know, one of the, um, one of the most common answers we get when we talk to people about playing against Furia is yeah. that most of them know what's going to happen, but they still cannot fight it. They still cannot defend That's it. The point I made in the beginning part is like, when you're going up against Art, he sticks to his guns and adjusts slightly to whatever you're doing. You just feel like you can't do anything. Well, best start possible for Furia, leading 2-0 now. G2 will have no choice but to accept the next round. No purchases should be made, and it's all going to be on Amanek and Nico to try and make the difference. Don't get me wrong, Nico can do it with a Deagle. He can oh, be absolutely <laughs> deadly. He's done it a lot in the past. I wouldn't be surprised to see it happen again. But the feeling I'm getting from Furia for these two rounds right now is very well coordinated. It's very well mm -hmm. organized. They move together. Yeah, they weren't making silly mistakes we often see on an anti-eco, right? They've got the better weapon. Sometimes you can get overconfident with it. You drop down. You don't have the, the luck, so to speak, when it comes to it. But like you mentioned, Nico with a deagle. Oh, my. How many highlights? How many moments have we seen from that man? But he won't get any in this round. Because, of course, Art's the one to find him as well. Starts to play on your brain. Oh. Nexa tries to take Art down. Oh. That's really good from Nexa. He starts with the... The 5 7 rocks it to the deagle off Nico's dead body and still delivers a second kill. That's something impressive. Now, with Kenne with an AK in his hand, 
Okay, he's only on 33 health, but if he can drop that over to someone else, potentially, there is an option for it. Yuri wants to get aggressive. He wants to get further forward on this. The nade goes up, and Kenny cannot escape in time. Furia, they're keeping the pressure on. They're not allowing G2 to get comfortable. Now, they have decided, and it's unfortunate that Kenny neither had a teammate or a Kevlar to play with. That AK was never really put to the test, never really used. So now, the 3v2 is engaged for Furia. Bomb being planted. Hunter's going to play the long game. At this point in time, with no kit available, it's mostly about damage for G2. If they can get a couple more of these rifles on the ground, forcing Fuya to invest. Also think about the bonus loss for Hunter with the MAC-10. That could be interesting, but it's not looking likely. Henny dispatching of Amanek. It's going to put an end to the madness. And I like to see what we see from Nexo. You know, a little bit of headshots left yeah. and right. He's definitely one of the uh, win conditions for G2. Whenever they win, whenever they have great results, we talk about his fragging ability. And I think, again, he's been tested heavily as an IGL the past few weeks, changing lineups, not really knowing what the future is going to hold, how is 2021 going to look like. But now they have their five. Now they work together. But that's an interesting part of this as well. Also, it's a P2000, not the 5.7. The so even more impressive Ooh. from Nexa coming right. out there. No, one, one thing that's very interesting with it, what he said in the interview was it's not just him making the decisions, right? It comes down to the coach and the G2 manager. And everyone has a say on what they think is going to be best. And that's why G2 initially went away from being the full French lineup. No warp on Kenny. Furrow's going around. It's going to be just the M4s. And again, as always, Furia, they love to take this banana control early on. The question is, do you make the mistake that a lot of teams do try and fight it, or do you hold back? Right now, G2, they're respecting it. G2 started with Kenny as a backup towards B, but they have won absolutely nothing from that engagement. A little bit of damage onto Henny, but that is it. All the nades and Molotovs being used have had zero impact. So far, G2 is holding the bracket really, really forward, so they know the A-side is not going to be a risk, but we have to play Nico, feeling a little bit rowdy, wanting to take some information. That is a good nade, and he's sneaking behind that smoke. Oh, and he's heard a lot of that jumping. He knows what's going on. He knows there's still some players around there. The Molly's going to separate some of them. They push out into it. Art wants to have a go, but he can't make anything of it. More utility coming out towards Nico. He's looking to do some more damage. He wants to stay around and fight, but he's got to be careful he doesn't get overwhelmed. He's getting the teamwork thrown out in towards him, and now he starts to be pushed back. His health is low, and he can't get the backup he needs as Furia will win out this battle, not in numbers, not in the kills, but in taking the hold of the banana. Kenny's here now, so the timing is perfect for G2. Nico has done a lot of damage to his Furia. They just have enough utility to execute. So it's going to be a very dry one. Two smokes, one Molotov to play with. Good first Molly used, but no player selling the spot. Oh, no. no, Nico didn't see. He didn't notice. He went down. It obviously spread too far. Kenny's going to put up a good fight with the M4, though. He finds himself the first couple. And Amanek, he's still waiting by. He can do some huge damage here. He'll finish off Finney, no problem at all. And K. Serrano on 45 health. He won't get it done. Kenny's rotation, absolutely perfect. Despite Nico going down, Furia didn't really get close to the site. It was a fantastic jump from G2. And you have to appreciate the fact that they understood at the beginning of the round, they didn't do a lot of damage, as we see here, Nico. He was, you know, you so see, unlucky. he looks to the like, left, ah, no. he evaluates the situation, and he makes a conscious decision not to move, yep. right? But sometimes these Molotov, they can be a little bit pesky. But I was going to say that G2 retaking Banana rather than fighting Tooth Nail at the beginning, that was the good call. Their nades then inflicted a ton of damage. Nico was able to find 1.7, 1.8 kills. Good jump from G2. That could be a blueprint for them. Still no orb though for either side. Oh, great nade damage there. Art and Keserato absolutely destroyed. G2 utility usage comes up huge there for him. So what's to play for Furia now? You have your main entry fragger down to 20 HP. He can still go in and find some information, but he's going to be removed quite fast. We see now G2 again with the retake towards Banana, but this time the bomb is on the ground. That's a huge tail. Vinny strikes back, puts Nico on the ground. Now a two, or okay, rather a four versus two on the B side. Kenny is here on time, but there's more smokes to play with for Furia. They decide to block to the left side. Mm. It's a little bit different. You see that though from Art, right? The sacrificial leader. Low on health, goes out, knows he's likely to die, gets the information. Vinny straight away tries to capitalize on it. Taking down Nico. Yes, it's a big scout. They now try to get some extra utility damage in. But Amanek, he's playing super far in the back. Good oh, job. and he continues to push onto it. He's got the back up there of his teammates. Furious swarm up into the site. And they're going to force Amanek back for now. His shadow's been seen. Vinny went on the hunt. But Amanek, 
He's going to land it with the UMP. Game is still on, but G2 now need to master the retake. Flash goes up from Hunter. They push on in, but the AKs are just too strong. G2 now... Got to make a decision if they want to save, and Nexus doesn't even get the chance. Headshots delivered, Fury pushed their way in, and even when the odds were stacked up against them, they still make it work. You can't help but think about what would happen if Amanek had something else than UMP. But once more, remember when I told you Fury were always coming in with some ideas, some ways to change the meta? It's been twice now that they attacked the B-bomb site, not with the city spawn smoke, but with the C1 smoke. And what they did right here, it worked perfectly. Smoking C1, couple of flashes were CT spawn, and Vinny takes that duel every day. And I do believe that as a CT, you're not used to that as much. You used to have the CT spawn smoked, you, you know, wall bang through yep. it as much as you can, and then you rotate towards coil. This time around, Fuya, they changed the pace just a little bit, and it's a perfect start now, 4-1 in the lead. And look what it does to G2. Money's not looking too hot. They don't have the weapons to play with here. They're going to try with just the SMGs, a scout, and a couple of upgraded pistols in there. But this is going to be a tough fight either way. Kenny's going to be the only one without the armor in play as well. Just to be notable when it comes to these fights and what might happen to him. He's going to have to land these initial shots. Again, though, all we've seen from Fury is this push up banana at the beginning. And they're actually going to be repushed. Oh, Vinny hears it. He's ready for it. The spray comes down and Vinverno is activated. Kenny left to find him. Well, that's a beautiful shot, but he needs to deliver a lot more than that. He's got a scout in hand. And he hasn't taken any damage just yet. But he has to be oh so careful. Like I mentioned, without the armor... Once he starts to get tagged up, it's going to be difficult for him to frag up. So Nexus has made the choice to rotate towards the A site. At least for G2, you have all your players there. But is it going to be enough? Nexa cornered by the box. That's a good tag from Kenyas. It's also a little bit of a bait. If he stays alive right now, that could give the time for Nexa to be activated. Just give it time, Nexa. There you have it. First kill from Nexa with the Deagle, but the trade is on point. Kenny now with the Soul Scout. Too easy for Henny. I'll take that gift. Thank you very much. I'll take that kill. <laughs> He was ready and waiting for it. He knew what to expect. And so did Vinny at this point. This could have been the moment. They were all so focused towards Banana. But Vinny heard the footsteps. He was waiting for it. The spray control as well. Mm. On point. It is sexy. So what's the pay for G2 now? You won one round retaking Banana halfway through it. But then when you did it again, you didn't really have the weaponry to be as effective. Amanek was down to the UMP. Now keep an eye on the buy. It's only Hunter that's suffering with the FAMAS. The rest is pretty decently armed, I want to say. Kenny with no armor, though, with the AWP. Oh, that hurts. Glass cannon. He needs to land those shots and get the hell out of there. He can't be fighting 2v1, right? He needs to be going on his own or have some backup from his teammate when he wants to take these jewels. Can play a more static position, though, and just hold back and wait for them to come to him. We are just very happy to just sit back right now. Yeah, that they... pulse they just used, that was because G2 were retaking Banana. Now we have the smoke coming in from G2. So it's a mental game. It's a 4D chess game. They waited for the Molotov for the second wave of utility, and now G2 put down their smoke. As a result, it stops down Furia. It slows them down in their approach of taking Banana. But if you keep an eye on the mini map, you can see this is just pressure. It's just yeah. Art with the bomb, making a little bit of noise. He's got Vinny in the backup. But we have K Serrado and another player taking apps at the same time. So they keep all the options. Oh, oh my god, that's no. gonna open it up even more. That is less than ideal. Nico wants to fight for it, but Vinny has already escaped. Furia, they faded out a lot of the utility, and Henny hits the glorious shot. More players to find, oh, and Amanex just fighting out in the open. The site has been given up, and there's nothing G2 can do in this round. You've given Henny an orb, you've saved Furia some more money, and they are just rolling over G2 on this T side. Again, think about the rematch perspective. That round needs no strategies, tr strategizing, sorry. It doesn't need any plan. It's basically duels, people waiting in the right moment at the right time. And this time, Henny just taking over. These two kills, I mean, what are you going to do if you G2? How do you debrief that round? How do you prepare for that? You decided to take some duels and you got punished for it. I wouldn't want to be Nexa right now. Because you have to figure out a game plan. But well, tactically, you haven't really been outmatched. Well, that game plan as well, what they were trying to do, you saw it. You mentioned it. The smokes go down and stuff. They yes. played off what they heard Fury were doing. But Fury, again, were one step ahead. They said, OK, cool, we'll just uh, sit back then. So you waste your utility. This time, you won't get crazy nade damage. But even on the round when you did, we still won it. So, you know, right now, Fury can't do no wrong. And even that, they take the gun away from Nexa. Only Hunter left to find. Art's low, but their money's not terrible. They're all in a pretty good place, considering Henny got an AWP out of this round as well, who's now on an M4. Pick it up the orb. Ah, they don't want to play on T side, maybe. maybe okay. Don't want T, T side orb on Inferno. We regularly see players not feel as comfortable with it. 
I can understand. We could see right here the left left eye peak from Kenny. Unforgiven, unfortunately for him. If you're G2, I guess you have to accept the fact that you will play a little bit defaulty, passive for the next couple of rounds. Just give time for the players to get activated, at least in terms of skill, and then you can start to have a, a strategical fight in the game. Because so far, feel you are just going through the motion. Oh, that's he, nice from Hunter. Bested by Hunter, that's a good start. Hunter maybe can pass away that Thanos to someone else, but Nico is burning. Oh. Banana, oh my god, that's just unfair. He cannot catch a break. Nico is trying multiple different angles to attack and challenge Banana and fight off against Fury here, but it doesn't matter what he tries, it's not working. Hunter's already been put low, but he did win out the initial fight against Vinny. But Fury is still sitting in a very comfortable spot. Three players now over towards B and Furia. They don't actually even have the information, but they're already looking like they're guiding up towards A. Very inspired decision by Furia at the moment. Although I don't believe a final decision has been made. They're testing the water, but if they don't see anyone in bracket, they might be able to assume that a B stack will come in. After getting that kill early on Banana, that would be the, the logical move if you are G2. And poor Nexa, he's gonna have a lot to do. Although, I say that, Keserado staying towards B might suggest a B split. Ooh. And there we have it. This could just be in G2's favor. If they can stick around, keep the positions, and find the shot, there is a name in the game. And imagine if Nexa now gets some extra information, because he would have heard those gunshots, been able to at least call it across. These two players boosted up. They're getting dealt with very quickly. Amanek firing back with some of his own, but the power of Fury is just going to overwhelm him in this one. Still one more player on the site, but Nexa has also found that M4 to fight with here. They've just got to isolate Kenny. Oh, that's... <laughs> oh, no. Case of right, might not check it now. The tap's come out, but it's too much for Kenny. There's too much oh, wait, going he on can around. Get the he can get the planter, James. That's the bomb on the ground with 13 seconds. If he takes another duel... Good grenade, but that's, that's doable for Nexa. Oh! Another good spray doesn't come through. Lack so of bullets. Close. Nexa played that as best he could. He striked while they were trying to get the plant down. But then again, even on the player who was just jumping away, instantly Fury are there to save the day, looking after each other, backing themselves up. The good body system. And, and for Fury, I don't believe it matters too, too much that the round was tied because I'm going to wait to see the money situation. But I do believe they have a some sort of a safety net. They've been winning rounds quite cleanly at that. So you've got about 6k on Yuri, 4k K Serato, 4.2k Henny, 5k R, and Vinny on 1.8, but they've all got AKs on full okay. court now. So it's basically one round safety. Yeah, they, they could afford to lose one round, they'd have a good rebuy behind. Considering they haven't had the AWP either, they've not bought it themselves, they're not in an amazing money situation because they have been going for these fights. We've seen, right, a lot of utility damage has come out from G2, they've been able to push back a bit. And think about it this way, Furia right now are sitting on a 7-1 scoreline, almost unilaterally playing the B side, which means that if they have other strings to play off of, if they have some A executes they want to hit, now would be the best timing. Because yeah. G2, all informations, all data, the history points towards the B side being the point of contention. But if you're Furia, you can just change it up. You're one step ahead. One step ahead is exactly what it's been like for Furia. Even when G2 tried to play them at their own game. And Furia at these beginning parts of the round, they're able to back up. Not just seeing Banana Presence this time, but look now, G2 with four players on A already. Maybe they're trying to expect that this could be something that comes into play. Well, they're changing the method, that is for sure. Now they leave Amanek completely alone. He's got a full set of utility. He just used his Molotov. There is still a smoke to play with. And I like what he's doing. He's basically trying to play the bait, saying, I'm not alone. Look at the utilities I'm using. Very clearly, this is a two-man setup or maybe three. But unfortunately, I don't think Fuya are buying this. They still have another control. You gotta, you gotta respect the hustle for Amanek. Staying alone on that B side with a <laughs> rifle like that. I wouldn't want to be him. Take and it that way. He doesn't even have a smoke to play with anymore. So in about two seconds, you will see rotations coming on in. Exactly what's happening on your minimap. Because Amanek cannot possibly hold the site right now. He could yep. play retake if they want to. But if they want to hold it, they need backup. Is this an over-rotation, though, having two players go alongside it? Just Depends off this they, bit. They, they, they know fight. Fury keeps hitting it so much. Look, Art's even going to go and show himself and fight up into this. He has the bomb in his hands, but Amanek's burnt on out. Oh, the bait! That's oh, a bait! He That's 200 bait. IQ'd it! That's absolutely huge! The spam comes through. Oh. Look, the rest of them strike. Fury are all over the map, and they are causing G2 nothing but pain. Vinny's even going to get Nico, and now it's all on Hunter. He's alone. He's locked down on the site. And they're just going to fight. Furia get it done. An 8-1 where G2 feel like they've got a good read on it. And Art says no. 
may I say I am tactically aroused? May I say that? Because that's what's see. happening. I am clearly aroused by this situation. We best it not was... cut to your camera. No, let's just give me out of the shot for now because that is such an, a good and nice way, a creative way to fake the B-side. They play off of the C1 smoke that I was talking about that yep. they have used two or three times in the past and they just fake the bomb plant and then run away. It's high risk, high reward. If Art falls at this time, planting the bomb, that's it. The strategy could just fall to pieces. But because he stays alive, when you have two players waiting, lurking on the A side, it just looks so beautiful. What did I tell you about Furia coming in with new ideas? There we have it. G2, they're running out of ideas. They're gonna go aggressive this time around. And even though Hunter can spray out one, there's full focus from G2 on the site. Nades are gonna go up. Bit of damage done towards Nexa. He was forward at the sandbags. They're still looking to have a player here. It's now Nico that wants to try and get aggressive. Caserado expects potentially a boost to come up or a player to jump up. And Fury now will just go back onto the A site. It's Amanek again. He's the sole defender. He's the loner left here to fight all of Fury once again. Finally getting some backup alongside him. They've got to hit some incredible pistol shots. Nexa starts off strong. He's ducking and diving around it all, but it's not going to work. Furia force them down. They don't have good weapons in this for G2. It's always going to be tough, but everything they try, mixing it up, four players towards B, leaving Amanek alone on B himself for a while. They're moving over to A. They're trying to play it smart. They're trying to guess what's going to happen next, but Furia, they are just ready. They are one step ahead, and individually, you can see how activated they are. I mean, Yuri, he's quietly on 14 and 3 right now. And that's how stacked this roster is. In pre-shows, you never have enough time to talk about the whole lineup. Today, we, we decided to give a little bit of focus onto Vini, and I think that is rightful. It's very justified. You know, Vini is doing an amazing job. But you have a player like Yuri, which I believe is at the top of the stats past three months for Fioya. We saw him in the last, oh, last showdown. He game, was, you remember? Right? He was instrumental. Oh my God. He was taking over the game, so he can do that. He's a very capable second wave of attack. He's also got a flying 65% uh, success rate in the entry frags. Even though he doesn't take them that often, yeah. he wins them when he does. For me, he's like your, your RPK of South America. I think he's more than RPK. I think he's more in his prime. Let's independent. Look at that. Yeah, okay, okay, but I get you. A bit more autonomous and independent and can be a bit more aggressive as well. But we didn't see so much from Yuri, right, earlier on. And now he's just going in and he, but they were almost going out, right, on train to VP. Oh, he took over. And what did he do? He just said, no, I'm not having it. On CT side, just starts pushing lower B. Well, I think it's safe to say they are in a different situation right now than they were in that very game. Nine to one in the lead. They have the T side on lockdown and G2 are trying to come in with a different approach now. They bring in Kenyas towards the B side and that's going to help them not to use their utility. That is why they have Kenyas. That is a guarantee that they do not need to smoke in the first few seconds, but he's going to have to find the kills. That's a good lecture on to Art and the trade comes in from Amanek. Best start possible for G2. It's finally working out. This is exactly what they needed, but they have had the opening duel a few times now and not been able to convert off the back of it. Can they turn this around? They've not moved any other bodies over just yet. They've swapped things around though and put Kenny towards A. If they can reposition him and he can potentially get some more damage done or pick up another kill, that's gonna be huge. All the spam through the wall. Gotta be careful there, but Nexus has gone aggressive. G2 trying to play Furia at their own game. And so far, so good, it's working out. Could they end the hot streak here? Because Furia are on fire. Good nade. Now for G2, it's just about closing the round. You don't need to get creative. You don't need to take that much risks you basically have the round in your hands. Play the numbers, play the information. We see Amanek is ready to put down the smoke as soon as Nico has some sort of information. The flash comes in first and so does the smoke and that should give them about 17, 16 seconds of serenity, if I stay. And this is one of the times we finally see Henny with an AWP in his hand. Haven't seen it so far up on the T side. Furia with not much time left. Do want to try and go on this. G2 not giving him any opportunity to get the picks. They know how far ahead they are in this one. They're going to plant in the smoke again. They're going to pull the smoke plant again. Henny now planting C1, but Amanek strikes in. And that is the round. One second. Not going to be enough. Any kill, any damage is just financial now. 
with Yuri Kutsnikov on the board. Good round from G2. So two things they did differently in this round. They started with Kenyas on the B side, which allowed them again not to use their utility, and they pushed the A apps side of the map, which they haven't done in the past. Next up, finding the kill when he was pushing, completely through Furia off balance. That is the kill right here. And as we can see, it was completely oblivious for Vinny that the risk was on his right hand side. Good job for G2. Problem is, how can you replicate that? You can bring Kenyas a little bit more and they won't know it, but can you push the A apps? Surely Furia will have something ready for that. And the problem here for G2 is you get this win, but you do not want to be reset. This is the problem now. You need to start chaining some rounds together because it's already 9-2. This is where it looks incredibly scary. Look at the ADR for Yuri. He had over 800 and the utility damage. G2 have done a great job fighting back. I guarantee you if it has that, that graph three or four rounds ago, that would have been a different story. But now G2, they've done a lot of damage as well. Oh, we have a different play, James. Different play coming on in. This time it's Hunter through mid. He's been spotted. Vinny is here for the first kill, but good trade from Hunter. And he's going to push his luck. He's pushing the duel, but Henny is solid on his feet. Two for one trade for Philia. And for G2, that is a huge problem moving on to this round. If Hunter could have gotten that kill and tried to back away, instead he went to fight for more. He was trying to change the game. But that's not something you can easily do against a team like Furia. When they last played Inferno, it was 9-6 T-side for Furia. They're ready to look, looking to do better than that. The scoreline ended up 16-8. And Arp leading the charge as always, wanting to get in. The smokes are down. Caserado's looking up high. He's got an idea where he might see a player. Oh no, Amanek is found. They go in for more as well. They now understand where Nico is. He needs to get down. He needs to get out of there. He's holding on. He's holding strong. This is exactly what G2 need. Tucked back away. Kenny S is coming to back him up as well. He's got to avoid the flames, and this time he will for now. He continues to strike, and Kenny's there to make it work. Kenny now in the 1v1. There's 40 seconds left. He can get the plant down, but this is where Kenny needs to come up huge. He needs to come up clutch, and Henny, he wants to get out of there. They may have not seen each other either. He got it. He's got the timing. Oh, he wants Kenny to. has no idea. Will Kenny hear the footsteps if Henny decides to run? There's a timer on that move. I yeah. There's a timer of about 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds max, for Kenny has to realize what's up. Oh, but as we no. can see on the map, that's going to oh, be enough. No. Henny, he'll have time to reposition wherever he wants. Yeah, Henny now has everything in his control. Kenny is stuck around too long. The plant's going to go down, and Kenny is only just now slowly backing away. And what utility? He's got no utility in this. Ooh. And Henny's playing aggressive. This could actually give Kenny a shot. He's fast, he can be so good. But it is so surprising. How can you see it coming? You Gross. cannot. Henny being creative in the 1v1. Yeah. When you have when you have so much time to play with, there are basically two ways you can go. You either want to play the long mind game and you, you basically trick your opponent into not finding your position and you play the time, or you surprise him with either a forward position or a smoke play like Henny did. But we also have to mention Nico. Oh, he did he was, everything. He was a hero for that B-side. The amount of time he stayed alive and the kills he found, that was amazing. Unfortunately for him, to no avail. Look at this. Even saw. Yeah, I can watched. understand the frustration. He I doesn't can understand. Know where. And that's the confidence that Fury have right now. Even in the 1v1, they're ready to go for a fight like that. The element of surprise certainly works out. Now G2. The buy is not terrible. This is certainly doable. Only Amanek on the UMP. A fair amount of utility. Better than I thought it would be for G2, to be honest. They've gone for the triple B again with Kenny S. But that's not going to pay off. See, Furia, they're changing the pace now. They have found themselves the gap that they needed in this map. They have access to long and they're all going to be on to Kenny. Oh, First no. shot being missed, that's a warning, but at least he's got information. He's got the incendiary grenade. He expects the play to come through. He's not taking the shot. And he does land it onto Caserado. That's beautiful from Kenny. And that's exactly what G2 needed. Now he falls back and he's going to play it smart. But old Vindog looks to come through apartments. He can hear what's going on. He's getting so much information as his team has decided to strike. He jumps on top of them. And once again, Furia, they reposition. They play a different style. Two players come from the top of mid. The Molly goes down. They're pushing through the flames. And Vinny's hitting all the shots now. He's going to get it done. And he does get finished off. But there's still a disadvantage here for G2. And they're all just dropping like flies. Nico now all alone. And he will likely back away. This is so beautiful from Furia. Again, you can see their ability to react 
as the round progresses to just find a solution, analyze the situation, come up with a backup plan, come up with an idea. Kenny has finally the kill towards Long. That was the thing that prompted Furia to change the course of action. They realized that is Kenny. He's supposed to be the third man on B. If he's in front of us, then obviously the A side is open. Nico is going to be luck lucky to keep his weapon, I do believe. And actually, no, the bomb would put him down. So that's horrible. That's a disaster for G2. But I'm liking so much what I'm seeing from Furia. They are so activated in the game. They really are activated in this game. They're one step ahead right now. You gotta get scared for G2 at this point because. Oh, only now. That's when you start getting scared, James. I was saying, if they get 10 5 <laughs> in my head, you know, we've got a game on our hands. We always have. And it's a half buy for G2 now. So they're going the conventional approach and they will try to reduce the distance to close the gap with this pistol. But the flash of perfect Nico somehow blind, able to take down Keserado. It's a one for one, but he's paid the heavy price with only 29 HP left. Flash is going through, Henny wants to fight, but Nico's behind the smoke. That's a good job, they could steal this round. They really could steal this round. They've had the advantages like this before though. This is still Furia they're dealing with. Nico's low on health, but he does have the AK. He's one of the few players with armor, Nexa and Hunter alongside him. Art still looking to challenge a bit here on Banana, but he will back away as Yuri and Vinny, they've crept up. Oh, they might be able to strike at a perfect timing. Easy first shot for Vinny. No problem at all for him to find his way in. They've got control of library, they've taken Art side, and G2 now have to be careful. It's into the 3v3. More shots to try and be landed here. Vinny's looking to try and challenge him. He backs away in the nick of time. Yuri's still hanging about. They push down Banana, but Nex is going to win it out. Two players low, but this is still doable for G2. 40 seconds on the clock, but Art is about to strike. Oh, oh great work by Nexa. He expects it. And now it's all on Vinny. 30 seconds to play with. No bomb in his back. Vinny's got to find some low players. But if G2 play this smart and play together... It's going to be far too much for him to handle. Vinny did find one good kill coming up into this. He's picked up the bomb. I think he's got time. Picks up the knife and he can start running. But there's going to be oh, a repositioning coming in from G2. Get ready for this. He's going to get traded. He's going to get rushed on as Must soon as he gets be. to the side. I don't see how he can make it work. They're going to rush him. That's it. A bomb plan is the best he can hope for. He does get the palm down, but G2, that was a huge round. Nexa there, if he didn't get that kill onto Art, that was it. Right. That was, that was absolutely it. He had a great understanding that Art would try something like that rather than playing together with Vinny. And this is how it all kicked off. Those Deagle shots. By the way, whoever's doing these zoom-in replays, you have my appreciation forever. I like it so much when we see the zoom coming in. Detail. In the first kill. Mm, production value right there. And next, I did it all. You're leading by example right now, buying some time for G2. Yep. Don't get me wrong. Even an 11-4 scoreline would be a disaster for G2, but they can save it. They can make it somewhat affordable, somewhat doable, moving on to the T side for Inferno. But they need to win this round. At least winning that pistol force buy puts them in a position where they have full rifles to play with. They have the entire belt full of utility. And that hasn't happened so, so many times in this first half. They've been struggling. They've been suffering throughout this entire game. And now they maybe have a shot at redemption. But R, he's got other ideas. Oh, that Molotov is going to be painful, James. Oh, wow. Burns him down, forces out the smoke. Art wants someone to make a mistake here. G2 in a good position to be ready for this, though. But we know, and we've seen it time and time again from Furia. They may look like they're going to commit. They may look like they're going all the way, and it doesn't often happen. Yuri and Vinny, they jump on out, but Art gets dealt with. Hunter's trying to fight some more, but he sticks around too long. Oh, Henny! Thought he would get the drop on him. Now he's allowed the opening. Nico coming Ooh. from Banana. They're not in the shots they need. And Nico, he is delivering. The moment of truth comes out for G2 and they stand strong. As we hit a potential 11-4 scoreline. Henny all alone. Many players for him to find. He's trying to fight it out, but it's not going to work. 11-4 after the first half. And we see a fantastic attempt from Furia that looked dominant from start to finish. But those last couple of rounds at the end may have just saved G2. Let's find out after the break Certainly if that'll be the case. Time, but they've given themselves a lifeline. A short one at that, Maniac. 
but it is a lifeline. It is, and they amped up the aggression at the very end. If you remember, Nexa and Nico in two different rounds, pushing from Banana, taking fights towards mid. That was the redemption arc for G2, being more aggressive, being dual-oriented, trying to force Filia to respect them. But is it going to be enough for the second half? Filia are sitting on a pretty lead of 11-4. Yeah, and I'm going to come back to the last time they played on Inferno when it came to DreamHack Masters. It was only a 9-6 T-side, right? So Furia, right. they have improved on that T-side when it comes to it. But there was a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of swing rounds. And that's what you say, Furia are winning the important ones, right? That could have made the similar scoreline, potentially more of a scoreline in favor of G2. It could have been a bit tighter, I agree with you. I will say though, I do believe Fury is a better T team overall. Their T side is where they, they scare me the most when I watch them play. So it's not over and done for G2 at all. Good, Good nade from Art. Oh. That is a money nade oh. onto Hunter, Kenny and Nexa. You take some fries with that one though. Oh yes. We are all in for good utility damage. And the boosters come up as well. Three players towards B. Yuri and Keiserato on the A side. Look, they have three players already. Art willing to fight, taking the USP jewels, but Nico will take that every day of the week. Smoke being put down, and now it's going to be all the madness. Oh, 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 Henny and Vinny. They've come up huge, and they'll back away. They'll move into the site. Now with the advantage, and still some oh. players low. Vinny through smoke. What is going on? Oh, no. Oh, no. Everyone is being pushed. Amanek. He wants to fight because he's so scared for his life. They're all around him. They go up into it. He did well even to take down Keiserato as Furia get the 12th. They do not let go of the pressure. You can see Furia, they want to fight every single time. At every single turn, they are going in for it. It starts with Art finding when they have the three-man setup, and then Vinny through the smoke, and Henny through the smoke, and there is never a time when Cheeto can actually breathe in. And I can understand why. You know, they realize that they have the upper hand. Why would you let go of the pressure? Just go and apply it again and again, fight, for, and you can see it. You can see the pressure. That's what I'm talking about. They know they have G2 on the ropes, so they're not going to let go. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them, you know, take banana, maybe even push down middle, because they, at the moment, control the game. And that's been the story of this entire map so far. G2 have never looked like they've been in control. They've had a couple of rounds, sure. They've been fighting for control. But trying to take that fight to Fury, it's a whole other ball game. Not something I'd wish for anyone. Definitely. But if you're going to beat them, sometimes you have to. You have to force Fury into a position of respect if you want to force them to play the long game, to play the tactical game. Because we had a good example on the T side. When Fury has given the choice, the freedom, and the opportunity to do basically whatever they want, then they come up with very great ideas. Not to even mention the skill they have in the lineup, which is insane, by the way, but that is all news. Any now. In the prime position to make some money, money with the MP9. He's being spotted. That could be a little bit dicey. Good flashes, though, to help. But G2 don't want none of that. So maybe they're trying to force over the rotations, but that's not going to be the case. The B players actually decided to get more aggressive. And Sergio Gray goes down to buy him some more time. Oh, the spotting out. The position goes down. A good smoke as well to provide the cover they need. Look at Furia, this. they've not faulted on this. They have to they have to turn around. That smoke will be there until 18 seconds. There's no way they go through it. So they decide to go towards bracket, but there's a comedy wel welcoming them. It's gonna be all on this one. He fires back with a few shots. Yuri lines up the rest. It's the FAMAS doing all the damage. And Henny was just a bait. He's like, he well, I'll take the first fight, and Yuri spring like a trap, straight up onto him. And this is looking rough for G2, man. It's it's all or nothing right now. It's do or die for G2. They have the full buy coming in. They accepted the conventional eco round right before, but they need to put some runs on the table. 13 is not too dangerous of a score, man. I think it's misleading. You can come back from a 13 deficit like that, but 14 becomes very scary and 15, well, you have to fight for overtime. So for G2, if they, come, if they can come up with a plan, if they can come up with a couple of rounds right now, we still have a game. I want to see a game, James. We do want to see a game. And that game right now is the Furia show from start to finish. Oh, gets lazy Pete. Vinny is lucky. So Henny there to back him up. It's still the SMG in play. They still got three SMGs in play as well. It is just a bonus round. Oh, oh my god, he's going for it. Of course. Oh my god, how does he not even oh, die? Henny comes smokes. out as well. This is so unlucky. G2, they cannot rest. They cannot wait. Furia destroy them and grab the 14th round, and it was a bonus. You say it's unlucky, 
But should we phrase it like that? Uh, Furia, that's their way of playing okay. the realm. They, they just pop in out of smokes. They have MP9s to play with, so you cannot really take long duels. So what you do, you hide in smokes and you play for timings. You shot through it. That was perfect. Yuri, at this point in time, was the sole defender of the A side. There was no one else to help him. So Fur uh, Art and Henny, sorry, they had to do something. Would it be take attention, take focus, or maybe just kill everyone through the smokes? That works as well. So the person I felt unlucky for was Vinny, because Vinny, <laughs> Vinny got lazy beat, right? And then Nexus still checked it, knowing his teammate probably didn't check it correctly. That's the situation they're in right now. Always, always. We, you call Just that lazy, lazy peak? peak. Yeah. We, I call, we used to call it alibi peak. It's like, no, I peak, that's my <laughs> alibi. No, no, I cleared the angle. Lazy peak is where they pretend this. to peak, they run away. Art goes on, he doesn't want to stop. He's taking the duels with the M4, finding Nexa early on. And what was bad goes now worse oh, for wow. G2. They have no time to breathe in this game. Fury, they got the hold of it, and they don't want to let go. Oh my god, Art, please just give them a chance. Nope. Fury have got something to do later on today. It's called practice and relaxing. After they dismantle G2 by the looks of it, because they are playing this game on a speed run. 50 secured, no pressure at all applied by G2. And now, if you are G2, you start to second guess yourself on what you do from here. Because everything you've tried hasn't been working, you now moved over to the T side and nothing has changed. It's one of these scenarios where winning the map isn't really in question anymore. It's about finding groove, finding the rhythm, finding the pace as a player and as a team. And for Nexa as a caller, right? Don't think about winning the map. You're too far behind. That's not what the point is. What the point is, is to grab some confidence, to believe in what you're doing, and maybe get activated for the second map. If G2 went on to put nine, 10 rounds on the board, I think it would change the story. It would change the narrative for the second map. But if we end up on a 16-4, what do we have to do? For, for, what do we have to say for Fioria? They, they dismantled them. And then we come to Mirage, which we said already, Furia can play to they a do. very high level. Yes, G2 have won it in the last few goes at it. That also takes a lot of those crazy Nico performances, you know. Look at the pressure they put on Yuri. Again, he's completely alone. But for now, it's about Vinny staying alive. Henny is in a position where he can quickly help the B side if need be, and he can help Yuri as well. But it's a heavy B lean for now. Flash is going to come in, but Nico is ready. The flash wasn't perfect, and it's on, on to Keserado to save the day. Keserado okay, put himself up high. Will it be checked? If they can sell some sort of a distraction so he's not focused, there is an opportunity for Fury to take this. But G2 now, they're expecting a blank. They're expecting something to come in. That's brilliant from Nexa, though. He checks it. He wins it out. And now Fury might decide to save. But Amanek, he's looking to pull off the lurk here and five them both Yuri and Henny. They have the money to try and attempt it, right? Any damage they put on will be interesting. It's going to limit what G2 can do in the next round. So Amanek should be the fail safe, and so he goes. That's Yuri out of the picture. But if any can get another one, I'm not exactly sure they can replenish it fully with AKs and all the stuff they want to have. Good job by Amanek. G2 stay alive for just a little bit longer. And this is what you were talking about. If they can get a couple of these rounds, then maybe there's a chance for them to feel better about how this game is. So we're in a position where the money is very good. For Furia, they've got that failsafe round. We're going to see a double AWP setup. Straight up into a double AWP setup to potentially close this out. They're banking on the fact that G2 will take a lot of dry peaks and dry duels. And we have seen that. It's been the method for G2 to come back into this game. Finding duels. And the AVP is the best weapon possible to punish that. Good nade onto Nexa, and Vinny starts off strong, and he burns another one. That is terrible. And look at this art. He's not slowing oh, down. Wow. He's just adding another one. Kill after kill going the way of Furia. They knew what was up in this round, and they're putting G2 down. Amanek and Hunter just left alone. No idea where to look or where to turn. The bomb is down at the bottom of mid. Oh. No scope onto Amanek, no problem at all. He's got him for more no scopes as well, because why the hell not? As Furia pick up the game, 16-5. We're moving on to Mirage, and we just saw a Furia who are activated, who are confident, who did not let off the gas, and they kept their foot on the necks of G2 from start to finish. They have everything going for them in this map, I have to be honest. They have the individual skills, they have the good ideas, they won the banana battle early on and then they just played off of that advantage. Remember that 7-1 scoreline when they, they faked the plan on the B side from Art to then play the A side? That was such next level. I didn't even think about it.
But for Fury, yeah, that was that was a clean, clean result right there. Fury just keep on getting better and better. We spoke about that three-hour talk they had. Well, it seems to work out in a big way. Right now, Fury don't seem to be slowing down in any ways. In G2, we spoke about them potentially cooling off. Well, this could be the point of it. This could be the thing where you were talking about. They need that development time now to build into this because they were still testing things with Jax. Yeah, you'd, you'd hope that there's going to be a reaction on Mirage. The last time they faced, G2 actually won Mirage, but you are right to mention this, this Jax and Amanek situation. Mm. How much practice have they put to really focus on Amanek being in the lineup? Now that's behind them, but short term, might just be too tight of a challenge. Well, let's find out if it is too tight of a challenge. We're going to be going to a break real quick, and then we come back. We're going to be doing the analyst desk, and we'll be working out what on earth is going to go on when it comes to Mirage. The pursuit of excellence. Is it a path we're all destined to take, or is it reserved for the very few? Does the course lay in plain sight, or does it have to be found? Is the route well trodden, or do we simply need to forge our own path? Years of training, dedication, commitment, and sacrifice lead to extraordinary individuals. But that alone isn't enough to craft greatness. In professional esports, technology reigns supreme, from communicating new ideas to analyzing data. It allows us to take on new challenges, to elevate new approaches, to improve performance, to allow us to come together and push toward a collective goal whilst surpassing all expectations. We are individuals, but through technology, we are one. And to attain greatness, we need to be met with tools that will support us on our journey. Including pizza. The Ryzen platform, developed and provided by HDAC Technology, aims to be a decentralized platform that meets a variety of needs required in our hyper-connected society. By combining blockchain with other core technologies, including IoT, cloud, big data, and others, the culmination of technology, data, dedication, raw passion, and a collective destination results in a near unstoppable force. Through IoT devices, not only players' physical data such as heart rate, pulse rate, brainwave and dynamic visual acuity, but also their psychological data can be recorded and combined with Ryzen blockchain technology. Providing fast performance, strong security and better convenience, the Ryzen platform is perfectly placed to support those who strive to reach the pinnacle of performance. Whether we are shining brightly at the peak of our potential. Let's go guys, we got this. Or glowing in the shadows of untapped success. The tools of tomorrow are the pillars to support our quest for excellence. Nice guys, see, nice. Heroes of today, legends of tomorrow. Powered by Ryzen. It was all smiles for Furia as they dominate G2. They were tactically ahead, they were aiming better, and they looked like they were bringing back that Furia we love because they were on fire. Start to finish, it never looked like G2 had a chance in this one. Nah, I don't even need my glasses in order to see that. That was a pretty sad showing right there for G2, to be honest. And uh, I am a guy who usually needs them. But to, to be honest, right, this was a, a master.